Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. This is Mutual. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. The chronosphere once again carries you along the spectral streams to another intriguing bubble verse, an alternate plane of existence. Our vision unfolds to the corporate offices of Severance Incorporated. An overseer monitors his subject's progress. On monitors and speakers encased in a large glass booth within the midst of a beautifully decorated office. We bring you Episode 6 of Corporate Punishment, Second Floor, Inbound Marketing. Hmm. What's the matter, boss? Oh, nothing. Doesn't seem like nothing. What's got you down? You wouldn't understand. Oh, I think I know why you're so blue. Is it because of the upcoming Bring Your Daughter to Work Day? I guess. Hey, I'm with you. I have no children myself. Personally, I think it's an antiquated holiday. I mean, I understand its roots in feminism, but when the daughters show up tomorrow and see that it's all men in charge, what kind of message will that send? I mean, I'm grateful to have you as a boss, but don't you think showing young girls a workplace dominated by men will... No, no. That's not the reason I'm upset. Oh. I'm upset because Tom's daughter, Lily, will be in tomorrow. And what? Is she shy or something? They don't call her Lily the asshole for nothing. Do people in this office really call a little girl asshole? I mean, lack of alliteration aside, that's an incredibly childish thing to do to, well, a child. Clearly, you never met the girl. What gave it away? The fact that I've only been here a few days? You don't understand how she can be. What, did she kick you in the shin, steal your lunch money, tie your shoes together, call you a big fat meanie? Oh, you think I'm fat? No, I was just pitching scenarios where it'd be justifiable to call a little girl an asshole. She microwaved her fish sticks in the company microwave. Oh, okay, I guess she is an asshole then. Mm-hmm. Sorry I doubted you. <sighs> That's what people seem to do. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't this a top secret facility? Why the hell are we even hosting a bring your daughter to work day? You deny workers the right to see their daughters? Wait, what? You, you can't expect the company just to allow workers to live with their families. And why not? Because it's a top secret facility. Duh. I, you know what? Never mind. I'm assuming we have some business to attend to with Connie. Who? Uh, subject 2496G. Oh, of course. Yes, I suppose it's about that time. Pull up a seat, secretary. <clears throat> subject number 2496G. Connie Bozeman. Date, Wednesday, October 6th. Time, irrelevant. Location. Level 2. Marketing. Mm -hmm. 
there's no way in hell you're going to convince me to step foot off this elevator. Why is that, Connie? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because there's an ominous tube slide before us descending into pitch darkness. Have you ever been on a slide before? I think you know that's not the issue. The clock's ticking, chosen one. <laughs> what clock? I haven't seen a single clock since I've arrived here. Not to mention my cell phone's nothing but a brick in this plane. The foul, unemployable beast is right, Connie. We must press onward. Nope, there has to be a better way. Let's see. Uh, what if I hit the elevator alarm? No, 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 Connie, don't. What's happening? Did it work? The ceiling, Connie. The, the, the ceiling's driving. We have to jump. What? Ah! We must jump, lest we be crushed. Yeah, I see that. Uh, screw it. Here. Chief Emil, are you with me? I'm right behind you, Connie. This slide isn't going to throw us out into some pool of lava, is it? I don't know. I, I've never made it this far. Never made it this far? What do you mean? Look, there's a light up ahead. Ah! Oh! Ow! My tailbone. Oh, rough landing. Oh, God. Where are we now? Oh. I see you've made it through our sales funnel. Ah! Where'd you come from? I'm not gonna have to fight you too, am I? The Sword of Synergy! Connie, ready it! Whoa! Whoa, whoa! <laughs> you can put that sword away, miss. This isn't a call to action. I'm just here to welcome you to Inbound Marketing Leads. Ah, and how did you find our sales funnel, newcomers? Oh, there's two of you. The fact that you both survived is a key performance indicator. I don't think these marketing puns are working quite as well as you think they are. Not a wise return on investment, you'd say? Listen, I'm just looking to pass through your floor. I need to reach the elevator on the other side. Oh, we can certainly generate some leads for you. But could I interest you in some freebies first? Honey, don't listen to them. Unless the freebie is a stiff drink, I'm not interested. That's precisely what it is. Huh? Maybe we could interest you in a B2C, a bourbon double cross. Or maybe a B2B, a brandy twice brewed, will tickle your fancy. You know, I haven't really felt hungry or thirsty since arriving here, but those do sound wonderful. Connie, I don't think that's a good idea. Great. How about we make you one of each? Finally, some hospitality. I was beginning to think this whole building was filled top to bottom with roid-raging cubicle jockeys. Excellent. Follow us to the back room here. Connie, Connie, I, I can't express how bad of an idea this is. Connie! Well, now these folks don't seem so bad. As opposed to whom? Uh, the cubicle jockeys that threw themselves at Connie's oversized letter opener just yesterday? At least they were openly violent. Honest lads. What do you mean? Let's just keep watching. In this room, over here. After you two, of course. Um, do you have a light in here? It sure is dark. I don't like the looks of this, Connie. The look of what? You can't see a damn thing in here. Just go on in. We'll get the light. Well, all right. <laughs> well, th 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 this isn't good. What the hell? Hey! Hey, let us out! Hey, you creepy little shits! Don't make me go postal on your ass with this letter opener! <laughs> Everything's all right. It's all part of the buyer's journey. Buyer's journey? You're insane! Never mind them, Connie. We must reach the elevator. Yeah, okay. Except for one thing. I can't see anything. It's pitch black in here. Oh, you want us to turn on the light? Uh, yeah. Sure. One moment. Duck. Jesus, it's so bright. Um, Connie, 
What? What? Oh my god. What is that? Oh, it's our brand identity, of course. Brand identity? I'm talking about that giant humanoid mishmash of billboards. Or banners? It's hard to describe, really. Hey, our brand identity has feelings. Corporations are people, too. And look, you've upset. <laughs> What the hell is that thing? What thing? That marketing flyer, Iron Giant Looking Monstrosity. It looks like HubSpot hired Dr. Frankenstein to perform another one of his experiments with nothing but billboards and brochures. Well, that's the brand identity, of course. You say that as if it's a given. Well, that's what they said. Oh, look at that. The monster's attacking. Turn the audio back on. <laughs> Whoa, great parry, Connie. Yeah, but it's no use. This sword can't possibly cut through steel or whatever this monster's made of. Oh, looks like that sword of yours is missing a key performance indicator. <laughs> you already used that pun, Nora. Ah! Good dodge, Connie. Do you have anything useful to contribute, Chief? Your chosen one's about to get chewed on. I should never have applied to this stupid company! It's hurt! It's been hurt, Connie! I see that, but I didn't do anything! No! Our poor brand identity! What have you done to it? Nothing! I'm just running in circles trying to keep away from the thing! Well, stop! Can't you see it's hungry for a new sales lead? Connie, look out! Shit! It just barely missed me! How the hell am I supposed to beat this ugly thing? Have you found a way out of this room, Chief? No. See for yourself. It's just a giant circular room covered in some gaudy floral wallpaper. Chief! Right there! What did you do? No! Brand identity! You okay? Is your product matrix out of whack? What's going on? I... I, I don't know. Figure it out fast, because I think we're pissing it off now. It's just gaudy floral wallpaper. Pathetic brand identity. <laughs> there, that worked. What worked? Chief, Chief, I think I figured it out. Quit your bad mouthing, you brat. Our brand identity is in pain. Can't you see? What hurts a brand's identity the most? Oh, I see. Take out its kneecaps. What? No, bad reviews. Bad reviews are what hurt a brand's identity the most. Watch this. <clears throat> I've never had a worse reception than at Severance, Inc. Yeah. Oh, I see. Let me try. I preferred if the elevators worked a little better. No, better than that, Chief. Like this. This company's corporate values make Hannibal Lecter seem a humanitarian. Yeah. No! A reputation! Uh, this corporate ladder has fewer rungs than a doorbell. Chief, just leave it to me. Hey, I hear your company donates to pro-discrimination foundations. Yeah. And I hear you haven't invested in any green initiatives. Yeah. Our brand identity can't take much more. And your customer service leaves something to be desired. Please, we beg of you no more. Lead us to the elevator, and I'll leave what's left of your pathetic brand identity. Yes. Yes, of course. Please just leave it be. Here, just a moment. There, Chief. The other end of the room. There's the elevator. Let's go. Wait, wait, what about those two? Who? Us? Fuck them. This goes above them. We're riding this baby to the top. Come on. I can't believe you did it, Connie. Or should I say, chosen one? Yeah, yeah, just press the button. With pleasure. I never thought 
I'd be so happy to hear elevator music. Fuck me. A warrior and a savant. Chief Emil, you must be proud of your pupil. Free us from these trials, you unemployable fiend. Can we quit it with the theatrics? <laughs> Free you? Well, that's something you will have to take up with HR. Oh, oh no. No, not Molly from HR. No, no. Your chosen one is far from prepared to take on the wretch of internal relations. The commander of compliance. The slayer of succession. The evil. Put a sock in it. I only wish to see the CEO. Eager to take on the next challenge, I see. Not what I meant. Do you believe she's deserving of such cocksurance, Chief? Cocksurance isn't even a word. No wonder you're jobless. Hey, Chief, I think this little gremlin shit is just overhead. Think I can stab through the ceiling and end this? No, no, no. The elevator will fall and we'll both be crushed. <sighs> it's wise of the pupil never to question the master. Just open the door, asshole. <laughs> It would be my pleasure. I wish you good fortune with the next trial. You will need it. Floor three, customer service. I'm just happy I didn't have to witness any dismemberment this time. Yeah, same. I was dismembered before. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Excuse me? I was dismembered from Sam's Club for sampling clay masks in the store. It wasn't my fault the sample counter was right next to the hygiene aisle. Besides, when have clay masks only been for faces? Since their conception, I'm sure. Well, mark that clearly on the packaging next time. Figured if pigs could cover their entire body in clay, why not me? Say, shouldn't you be setting up armaments in the kitchen right now in preparation for the arrival of Lily the Asshole? Ah, good call, Secretary. Let me just wrap this up. <clears throat> Subject 2496G, Observation Terminal, signing out. The Overseer is played by Frank Guglielmelli. His secretary is played by Rosanna Jimeno. Connie Bozeman is played by Caitlin Curtis. Chief Emil is played by Van Riker. The Unemployable and Marketer Number One are played by Spencer James Frederick. Marketer Number Two is played by Joe Stofko. And the brand identity is played by Stephen Chisholm. Corporate Punishment is written by Stephen Chisholm. Production, sound design, and music are by Daniel French. Thank you for flying the Chronosphere during Episode 6 of Corporate Punishment. Chronosphere Fiction is listener-funded. The Chronosphere is in need of maintenance and upgrades, and you can help in two ways. You can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com, and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. That's less than 25 cents an episode. Or you can give a direct contribution on Venmo to at Fishbonius, F-I-S-H-B-O-N-I-U-S. We do need your help to keep these stories coming to you. And we want to keep things commercial free, so please help us out. Until next time, keep, keep your cosmos clean. Not adjust your sets. You're tuned to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow on Mutual is Thursday Thrillers, our roundup of action, adventure, mystery, crime drama, and thrillers, of course. 
Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of diverse audio tales. Or find the Thursday Thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.